Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cinematoons Records again. I decide to make a new Tales of Terror from Reddit video. And I found this one called Mirror Mime. They better get out of here because this YouTube channel is Mime. Okay, I'll get to a video. No, 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 wait, I got another one. There's this creepypasta called Red, and the Red, yeah, I like how it says Red because I didn't read it, and I never read it before, and it's been released on Reddit. But The tale of three reds. Red as in color, red as in read in past tense, and Reddit as the social media it was posted on. Mirror Mime, written by Bay B. Face Rights. When I drearily flopped out of bed in the morning and warily brushed my teeth and washed my face, something struck me as odd. You don't grin while washing your face, but judging by the face staring back at me, I just did. It was a rogue smirk, a blink and you'll miss it type detail that caught me off guard, but a smirk was more than enough to make me stare back at my reflection. I moved and he moved, left arm up, right arm up, left arm down, right arm down, we locked eyes and narrowed them. The narrow eyes confirmed it. He was looking for a challenge, and by God, was I gonna give him one. So come then, twin. Let's play this game, and see who comes out on top, man or mirror. I'm not gonna aim wing to ha. Maybe I might just ha. He's quick, but he's me. I'm, and I'm slow. So I could catch him off ga -ha. Ah, reverse psychology is a bust, but it makes sense considering he's my image reversed. Maybe a different tack is in order. He never moved, officer. He just kept staring at himself. See, she said, weeping at the sight of the withered corpse looming over the basin. When I asked him what he was doing, I was just told that he was trying to catch himself out. It's a mysterious case for sure, ma'am, but I assure you we'll get to the bottom of this. The officer lied. In reality, he had no more of an idea than she did. And so they took him away, despite the fact that his bony hands that gripped to the sink made it a challenge to pry him away from the mirror. And as the they dragged him down the stairs, she tearfully looked at the bathroom one last time before heading out the door. But something unusual caught her eye before she turned around. Just outside of her peripheral view, she could have sworn that she saw her own reflection give a sly grin. Our Little Game Written by Triple Deka I used to love our game. Our little secret. The thing just you and I shared. I can remember the day it started. The roses I left at your locker with a little mysterious love note. The way you smiled and you looked so incredibly happy. You never came out and said it, but I knew from the way you'd wave to me that you knew it was me. All those little miracles. The snow cleared from your car. Birthday balloons waiting for you. 
so many chocolates on Valentine's Day left anonymously and you would act that there was nothing between us. I understood that silence and act was your love language, that you would hide your emotions until you were ready to make them public. I was certainly patient. I saw the way you would frame ignorance or concern to your friends. Your performances were outstanding, made me just fall deeper in love with you. I guess I didn't just realize how much you loved me. I didn't think when I came over that dreamy and dark night you would have a gun ready. I would have never expected you would have a shrine dedicated to me or this cage in your basement. I guess it makes sense why you finally text me and invited me over. I am really glad you can finally show me how much you love me. But honey, I am starting to get scared. I am afraid you're never going to let me go. Please, we can keep playing our little game. You can go back to pretending I don't exist. I will do anything for you. I won't tell anybody what you've done to me. Please just let me go. The Trouble with Balloons Written by Just a Dare I grabbed at the twine, but my daughter's balloon quickly flew beyond reach. Suddenly, memories flashed through my mind. The balloons floated above the kitchen table on Lilia's first birthday. Her mother and I screamed at one another while she cried confused. The big piece of cake on the tray of her high chair exploded when she slammed her hands down on it, ending the whole row. When she was two, my wife and I had our last fight as a couple. I found out her mother had cheated, so I punched her in the stomach while our daughter sat on the floor watching TV. When she fought back, it became bad and Lilia tried to break us up. I backhanded her and dra then dragged her mom into the bathroom and locked the door. She pounded on it even long after hers were the only knocks heard. That day in 8th grade she tried to hide her report card from me. The first time she screamed, Screw you! I hate you! She was 15. When she ran, I snatched a handful of her hair, and that was enough. While kneeling on her back, I dug my hand into her neck, snarling. Just like your B-word of a mother, screw you too. The first boy she nev ever brought home was the last boy she ever brought home that I knew of. Then again, I was in jail for two months after that one, and who knows if she really stayed at her Aunt Jen's house. When she was 18, she rushed through the door with a bat. She missed my head, but I got my shoulder. I was too drunk to do much, but I wrestled it and away from her and kicked her out of the house. She screamed outside at me for hours. On my 40th birthday, I was alone and intoxicated. I called her up and told her she should come over and make her dad a little less lonely. She knew what I meant and hung up. I phone terrorized her until she turned it off. I stumbled from my house to go to her, but woke up the next day on my lawn. Today's memory, I got a call from her. She invited me out. I thought she might want to reconcile. I knew I did. I'd been a terrible fodder. I was excited when I met up with her and her son at the fair. 
he was the spitting image of me at that age. I tousled his hair and smiled as we ascended. I met her glaze and she forced a smile. I thought I understood, but now I know. As I flail through the air with the wind rushing in my ears and Idaho racing up to meet me, I knew exactly why she pushed me from the balloon's basket. I'm just glad that at the last second I'd recognize her intention to shove and had been able to pull her son with me. The Dead World Written by Fireside Chats 451 He said the world above was dead. I believe him. I'd heard the screams, seen the blood oozing between the steel door and the rough earth frame. His strong arms trembled around me as his murmurs filled the air. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Even when the screaming stopped, we stayed below. Meals were from cold cans. Nights were spent huddled together for warmth. Sometimes there were footsteps overhead. We froze where we were staring unblinking at the dirt ceiling until they faded past. I didn't question until I was older. If the world was dead, who walked past our door? The question ate at me. One night, I decided to find out. It was easy to creep away, simple to ease open the locks that had remained fast for years. My heart beat so loud Yet when the hatch swung open, nothing happened. I wasn't at attacked by creatures, nor obliterated by hellfire. Above, the stars glittered like spilled sugar, my first glimpse of the world in years. I poked my head outside. It was so silent. There were no birds calling, no insects chittering. The trees were bent and charred. The grass dry and brittle, the world was truly dead. It was different. Seen at first hand, I knelt on the dry earth and wept. Wept for what the world had once been. For what it had become. For the future it had lost so completely. I was so confused by grief that I didn't hear the creature cry up behind me. It was on me in seconds, clawed hands grasping my hair, pulling to bare my throat. I screamed as teeth closed on my neck, and the thing let go. I scrambled away, shaking in terror as it writhed on the ground. The creature was skeletal and gray. Its hair patchy. What little remained matted and brittle. It shuddered and opened its mouth as though to scream, but there was no sound. As I watched, its skin bulged at the hands and mouth rippling and brightening, transforming. Claws became fingers, fangs became teeth. In seconds, a naked young woman lay panting on the ground. She turned towards me, her eyes shining with tears. Savior, she whispered. She crawled toward me along the path of green grass that marked my escape. She held out trembling hands as though to embrace me. Savior, she said again, openly weeping. Where have you been? We waited so long. A gunshot erupted and she dropped, her eyes vacant, her head a bloody mess. I stared at the carnage for a moment, then looked up. 
Otter climbed fully out of the hatch, his Prius robes blacker than the night. Tears rolled down my cheeks as understanding hit me. Why? I asked. He looked down at the woman, his face blank as polished stone, because, he said, hoistering his pistol, they don't deserve to be saved. Red, written by B Word Bebe. Another nightmare. I can't seem to escape them. The day that ruined my life keeps playing in my mind on repeat. The adrenaline of almost losing my life rushes through my veins each time I close my eyes. The shock of bodies hitting the floor. Every shot that echoes stops my heart. The memory of a sharp pain, a bullet piercing my skin, only for the pain to worsen as my dad drops dead in front of me. The fluorescent lights being reflected in the crimson puddle around me. Red used to be my favorite color. The Monster Written by Zesty Close underscore Dig 158 I've always been afraid of horror movies. Whenever my friends took me to see one, I always close my eyes. I think it's normal. There are so many individuals who can't watch a horror movie because they get scared. Yet unlike these, I don't think my fear originates from the blood shown or trivially from jump scare. No, my fear originates from the evil of monsters. Yes, the monsters. Today, my friend Eric showed me a particularly raw one. The plot was about a little girl who was kidnapped and tortured by a monster. Throughout the film, you could hear the screams of the little girl, the desperation of the mo mother, but above all, the fun of the monster. I told Eric to stop the movie. When he did, I said, that monster, he was too scary. He looked at me, you're right, humans are scary. He said with his four mouths. Bad Dreams Written by Blue Pink 001 The cry woke me. A high-pitched whimper. As usual, this was followed by the thud of little feet along the corridor as my son left his bedroom and fled to mine. He was quick, as though his nightmare was still chasing him. A toddler seeking his mom for comfort. He's the only child and I'm a single mom. All we have is each other. It's okay, sweetheart, I mumbled drowsily. I felt his little hands grab my toes and I sleepily sat up and pulled him into bed next to me. It was dark and I was too exhausted so I let him curl up in my arms, but something was wrong. His breathing was too noisy, and I asked him what was wrong. Mommy? My son's confused voice called to me, but it's from, from his own bedroom, not next to me. I tense up as the bundle in my arms shifts. It's Breathing quickens again with excitement. I can feel its hot breath on my face as its tiny hands pull me in closer. 